So what's the solution? What is really the solution? The solution is that unless we recognize our brokenness, we really cannot find help. Several thousand years later, there was another Adam who came into the world. The Bible calls him the second Adam who was Jesus Christ. He was exposed to the exact same influences that the first Adam was exposed to. You know, lust of the eyes, pride of life, and power. But this time, this Adam didn't cave in like the first Adam did. He succeeded in all those three things. And, and he was able to conquer this evil that's within all of us and that's around us by overcoming it. And not just that. He went to the cross and he overcame death, which, was, which came about because the first Adam disobeyed. He was able to negate death on the cross by coming back alive. And now he is able to restore all these things in our lives. He is able to restore the complementary companionship. He is able to bring back the covenantal love in our life. And he is able to help us see our brokenness and be okay with it. I used to think marriages will work best only when we are able to find someone who has the best qualities in the world or after you're married it's only after you start cultivating the best quality in each other you'll be able to see that and fall in love with each other but what I have realized is and I want to challenge you today is also is only when you see the brokenness in you and the brokenness in your spouse you will be able to completely love one another it's not the best in us that makes our marriages great in fact it's the worst in us that makes our marriages great you know why because it brings us to the same level field to see that how we are equally broken my wife jemmy she knows the deepest brokenness that I have experienced in my life and I have come to know the deepest brokenness she has experienced in her life and I can tell you honestly before God that's the most beautiful thing that happened to us in our marriage and that's what holds our marriage together because we can together go to the second Adam Jesus Christ at the same time and ask him to heal our brokenness and as we have this shared experience of experiencing this healing of our own brokenness that draws us even more closer together. Not because we are two perfect people. Marriage is not between two perfect people. In fact, marriage is two imperfect people in whom God is trying to work out His perfect love through His Son, Jesus Christ. So if you're single and ready to mingle, I know you're going to be upset at me for using this phrase too much. How do I prepare for getting married? Whom should I get married to? May I suggest to you, discover your own brokenness first. And may I suggest to you, invite God to heal your brokenness. Otherwise, you will be carrying that brokenness into your marriage. And may I suggest to you, to find someone who has also discovered their brokenness. And then you look for the purpose that God has put in your heart. What is it your heart beats after? What are the gifts you have? And what is it the heart beats after of the person you're looking to get married to? And what are the gifts they have? And when you find a perfect resonance between your brokenness and your passion and your giftedness, you're set for a wonderful ride together. Marriage is the most painful experience on earth and marriage is also the most blissful experience on earth when people get these two realities right in their lives. It is not the best in us that will hold us together as married people. But it is the worst in us that will hold us together through the grace and mercy of God. So without God in our lives, our work becomes burdensome. And without God in our marriages, 
our marriages become controlling. But when God comes into our life and we reestablish this tripartite covenant, He shows us our brokenness, and then you will be okay to open yourself to your spouse and say, I am so messed up. Do you still love me? And you will be surprised. That will encourage your spouse to open up and say, I am also messed up. I didn't want to tell you because I thought you would not love me anymore. And I can tell you there's no beautiful experience than when both of you are able to come to that point and say, we don't have anything in us to merit our love. Let's go to this Christ who can heal this brokenness. We are all equal at the foot of the cross. No one's better than the other. And when that grace comes into our hearts and transforms us, when that love fills our lives, is when you can truly, authentically begin to experience joyful marriage. And then God will reveal, start revealing the purpose He has for you as a family. And then God will start connecting the dots in your life and your life will now take on a new meaning. And now you will not be under the tyranny and fear of work because you decide what you want to do with your life. You choose the purpose God has for you. And now you have your wife in that journey as well, in whatever form or fashion. And then you're, and, and this purpose that you're going to be doing is going to involve the unique abilities, the creativity that God has put into you. And it's all going to fit beautifully together. Your creativity, your calling, and your community with your family can mirror this original design God had. But the first point is to realize we are all broken people. I have a small video.